Now yeah. at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, the FAA released a report on the Port O'Connor helicopter crash from last year, citing the pilot as reckless. A mother and sister are recovering after the son attacked them with a machete, what witnesses had to say this evening. And stay with us as we give you a preview of Safe Street, Safe Pets, a 25 News Now Extra with reporter Lupe Zapata. And good evening, everybody. The cloud deck is here. The rain is not that far away. So look for a Thursday night with uh, rain and a rather soggy Friday. I have your forecast coming up. And the St. Joseph Lady Flyers preparing for their playoff matchup here from them in sports. Oh, at six. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. The body of a local fisherman was found Wednesday at Lake Texana. Monday, authorities had found an abandoned vehicle and fishing gear belonging to a local fisherman who was seen earlier in the day fishing off a boat dock pier of Texana, south of Ganado. By Tuesday evening, it was concluded that the missing person had fallen into the water and drowned. Wednesday, the body of 64-year-old Tomas Gutierrez of Edna was recovered and secured. An autopsy was ordered to determine the cause of death. The FAA says the pilot of a helicopter crash near Port O'Connor on March 6th of last year was reckless. The pilot of the helicopter, Dr. Glenn Ide, and Arcelia Cisneros, the passenger, died when the helicopter traveling from Port O'Connor to the Calhoun County Port Lavaca Airport crashed. The FAA reports the weather was below visual flight rule minimums and taking off in those conditions was reckless. The FAA reports there is no record the pilot checked the weather before takeoff. They also report at one point the pilot made a quick descent to about 50 feet while turning back to the right where it eventually hit the ground and was destroyed. Bay City Police want information on this man. 22-year-old Joel Lopez of Bay City is wanted for his reported involvement in a recent shooting. When arrested, Lopez faces a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Authorities say the suspect should be considered armed and dangerous. Contact local law enforcement if you know the whereabouts of this man. In Edna, a resident, or rather an Edna resident, was arrested Wednesday by Wharton County Sheriff's deputies. 35-year-old Tiffany Marquina is charged with human smuggling. She is in the Wharton County Jail in lieu of a $20,000 bond. Over a week ago, Wharton police arrested Waynard Austin on seven felony warrants. Shortly after, Austin escaped from custody in handcuffs. Austin remains at large, last seen wearing a black hoodie, blue jeans, and white shoes. If you see him, contact 911. Wharton police say Austin is not a threat to public safety. Hallettsville City Council approved a bond election at its Monday night meeting. The Hallettsville Tribune Herald reports the bond election will be Saturday, May 4th. The bond is for $6 million, which will be used to repair declining streets. The city election will also be held May 4th, with three council members in Hallettsville up for re-election. Four candidates are on the Republican primary ballot for Victoria County Commissioner Precinct 3. Shannon Martin recently retired from the Victoria Fire Department as interim chief. He's a Victoria native and joined the Victoria Fire Department in 1987. He hopes to bring his strong work ethic to commissioner's court. I will give the taxpayers not only what they deserve, but I'll give the taxpayers what they're paying for in that position. There are a total of four Republican primary candidates running for County Commissioner Precinct 3. Along with Shannon Martin, you have Marcus Salinas, Brad Tucker, and James Soderholtz. So far, four people filed to run for City Council in Victoria. Residents can run for any of the four regular City Council seats in District 1, 2, 3, and 4. Four candidates have filed, one for each position. Rafael De La Garza III is seeking re-election in District 1. Jan Scott is seeking re-election in District 4. This is for Victoria City Council. Attorney Stephen Kidder filed to run in District 2. Business owner April Butler filed to run in District 3. The deadline to file for a place in the ballot is 5 p.m. tomorrow. The election is Saturday, May 4th. And with that, let's take a look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis. 
Well, thank you, Karina. We've been waiting for the rain all week and it is here. It is actually just far uh, uh, south of us. As you see right about here, Victoria's got most of the cloud cover, but if you go down south, it's been raining down uh, in the Corpus Christi area all the way down to Hebronville. Uh, that is uh, rolling in tonight and tomorrow, your Friday, looks a little soggy. We'll be talking about that and what about the weekend, all that coming up in just a moment. We'll toss it back to you. Mac, thank you. A quick reminder this coming Monday on 25 News Now at 5, we'll have the two Democratic pri Party primary candidates who are running for District 27. Don Brubaker will interview Tanya Lloyd and Anthony Tristan live in studio. We hope you'll join us. Then on Tuesday, we'll have incumbent Congressman Michael Cloud of District 27. Three other people are on the Republican primary ballot, including Chris Mapp, Scott Mandel, and Luis Espindola. Congressman Cloud previously served on the Texas State Executive Republican Commission Committee rather, and was chairman of the Victoria County Republican Party. And he's worked to improve issues at the border. He won the special election on June 30th, 2018, defeating Democrat nominee Eric Holguin, 55% to 32%. A grisly attack in Houston. A man is accused of stabbing and slashing his mother and sister with a machete. It happened at an apartment there Wednesday morning, and we have to warn you that some viewers may find this report disturbing. This is crazy. Houston police officers donning full tactical gear, waiting for a man who's barricading himself inside this second story apartment. He was in the house thinking about what he did. The man who Houston police haven't yet identified just stabbed and slashed his own mother and sister. I kept hearing, help me, help me, screaming, help me, help me. His sister making it downstairs to a neighbor's house. You can follow her barefoot, bloody footprints to this handprint left in blood on the front door. She's right in front of my door, y'all. She was like, help! And she kept saying her brother did it, her brother did it. He's in the house, he went in the house. The brother attacking his family with a machete. His mom left lying in the grass, both pouring out blood covering the sidewalk outside of the apartments here to the point it's just too gruesome to show on TV. I seen blood. He's just bloody, bloody, just bloody. And he that came out like nothing ever happened. The Houston police SWAT team taking over this corner of the Vista at West Chase Apartments. Tactical officers posting up in living rooms, not sure of what other weapons the guy might have. Another neighbor recording the moment he surrendered to police after about an hour-long standoff, according to neighbors. It felt like it was premeditated. Yes. I'm not even going to lie to you. It seemed like it was premeditated. He didn't, he didn't have to do that, do that to his mom and sister. All I can do is pray to God that whoever did this and that they make it through. The women are now in an area hospital and their condition is currently unclear. Houston police say they arrested the man and he will be charged with aggravated assault. An Amber Alert is issued for a 12-year-old girl who was last seen in Waxahachie on Wednesday. Authorities say Tanya Jackson left her home in Waxahachie at about 10 a.m. Wednesday. Police said it is unknown what she was last wearing, but she goes by the nickname Tay-Tay. Authorities are working to track down leads from a cell phone that Jackson left behind. Call 911 with information. And an Amber Alert is still active out of Houston. The victim is one-year-old Noah Johnson. He was last seen wearing a blue shirt and a flower print pants. The suspect is 38-year-old Kamala Johnson. The suspect is driving a white 2007 GMC Yukon license plate number that reads STM 7097. Call 911 with any information. Tonight on 25 News Now at 10, we have Save Street Safe Pets. It's a 25 News Now Extra on the issue of roaming and stray animals. Join us for an inside look at Victoria County Animal Services, where workers who are on the front lines give us a closer look at what's happening. And reporter Lupi Zapata worked on this story, and he's joining us now to tell us more on what he learned. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for having me. Oh. I'm excited to be here. This is his uh, debut that on his right. hometown station. He grew up here, so uh, welcome officially. Thank you. I was going to say welcome to your hometown. No, you've been here before. Yeah, this is my <laughs> first time live in the studio. Yeah, so that's I'm awesome. always <laughs> so excited to cover the story. I am an animal lover. I used to work at the Texas Zoo here in Victoria. Wow. So when James our news director asked me if I'd be interested in covering a story about, you know, the stray issue here in Victoria. 
I said, absolutely. Let's jump on that. Yeah, so, you know, I think people here in Victoria County know that this is a problem. It is an issue that is really happening in a lot of different neighborhoods here mm -hmm. in Victoria. Um, but it, specifically here in Victoria, the Silver City neighborhood in, in Victoria is really being hit hard with dogs and cats just kind of roaming free everywhere. Mm. And the main issue is owners are not um, putting their dogs away. They're kind of just letting them run loose right now. And that, of course, gets into overbreeding. And before you know it, you just see packs of dogs roaming around different neighborhoods. And so you've been following this story closely. Tell me yeah. a little bit about the strain that these shelters are having to deal with right now. You know, so the, the Victoria County Animal Services can only hold, you know, a couple of dozen dogs at a time. And once they get to capacity, they have to start euthanizing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking with the director, that's something that he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to bring in dogs if he doesn't have to. So this idea of euthanizing any dog is something that he's wanting to back away from. He's wanting to chip these dogs and then find their owners and cite them rather than euthanizing. Sure. So the main issue that we're facing in Victoria right now are owners, one, not tagging their dogs. A lot of these dogs mm. that I saw were not wearing collars and not chipping. So mm. some big issues here. All right. All right, well, Lupe, thank you so much. We look forward to your news art, yeah. your news report tonight. So join us tonight for 25 News Now at 10 for Safe Street, Safe Pets. Here is your beer poll. You can scan that QR code on your screen. The question is, do you want to see more schools with education programs that promote responsible pet ownership? Yes or no? According to our results, it looks like 61% of the viewers yes. are at yes. All right, thank you for voting. We want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part. And we'll have an update on 25 News Now at 10, and that's when you can see Loopy's special report. That's I'm right. looking forward to it. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so that when you're on YouTube, you can get Crossroads Today. And stay with us, former President Donald Trump's third criminal trial set for March 25th is coming up on 25 News Now at 6. Also ahead, Russia targets cities across Ukraine today as NATO representatives urge lawmakers to pass the billion-dollar aid package for Ukraine. The patrol car belonging to missing Tennessee Deputy Robert R.J. Leonard was pulled from a lake today. The body of a woman was found in the car, but no sign of Deputy Leonard. Leonard answered a call Wednesday night of either a man jumping in and out of traffic or a man and woman fighting. The deputy radioed in that he was taking someone to the county jail. A short time later, dispatchers heard something from Leonard they could not understand, but determined he may have said, quote, water, unquote. His wife, Life360 app helped find Leonard's location and the investigation continues. Russian strikes targeted cities across Ukraine today. Explosions could be heard in the capital of Kyiv. Meanwhile, back in Washington, the U.S. Senate passed a $95 billion foreign aid package, which includes billions of aid for Ukraine. But this will now face a showdown in the House, as Speaker Mike Johnson says he does not plan to bring the bill to the floor. And many House Republicans are opposed to spending further aid for Ukraine. NATO Chief Jens Stolenberg urged U.S. Congress to approve a vital aid package for Ukraine. 
because uh, if we allow uh, President Putin to win, it will not only be uh, bad for the Ukrainians, a tragedy for the Ukrainians, but it will also be dangerous for us. It, it, it will make the world uh, even more uh, dangerous and us more vulnerable. The European Union recently approved a 50 billion package of aid for Ukraine, while Canada announced a further 60 million in military aid Wednesday. Former President Donald Trump hush money trial will begin with jury selection starting March 25th. This could be the first ever criminal trial against a former president on charges he falsified business records to cover up payments to women. And despite the trial receiving the least attention of the four criminal cases against Trump, this trial threatens to sideline the likely Republican nominee during the heart of campaign season as he runs again for the White House. A Texas World War II veteran celebrated her 100th birthday on Valentine's Day. Happy birthday to you. Lillian Bibbs is turning 100. Happy birthday to you. She was born February 14, 1924 in Denton, Texas. But this isn't about turning 100. It's about this extraordinary woman and her extraordinary life. Bibbs is a World War II veteran. She enlisted in the United States Women's Army Corps in 1944. She was a postal service person in the military. A brave step for anyone, but especially a black woman from Texas during that time. At the time that they served, it wasn't integrated. So that was really awkward that, you know, that the, uh, the blacks served and they had to stay within their own regiment. Bibbs received three medals for her service, the World War II Victory Medal, the American Campaign Medal, and the Good Conduct Medal. Bibbs was married to her husband, Lewis, also a military man, for 65 years. They had four children, and her life of service didn't stop when she left the military. She served mobile meals through, for the church to the sick and shut in for years. Bibbs has 13 grandkids, 10 great-grandkids, and six great-great-grandkids. Her faith, her service, and her family have kept her going. For her to live this long, and with what we know she went through to get this way, we didn't think she'd make it, but because of her faith in God, you know, she's still hanging in there. Hey. Ashley D. Martino, ABC 15, Arizona. Amazing story right there. Uh, well, folks, the clouds are here. The light rain is beginning to come up uh, into our region. It's already in deep south Texas. So, yep, we're looking for rain rolling in tonight and being around pretty much all of Friday. But right now, our temperature is at 70, so it's rather warm and muggy out there. We managed to get up to only 77 as a high temperature, but all that's going to be changing in terms of warm weather for at least a couple of days. Stay tuned. I'll have your forecast right after this.
Well, good evening, everybody. As you can see right about here on the big picture, you can see all that moisture coming up from the south. It's beginning to rain in the valley where they have a couple of little heavier showers. But as far as we're concerned, it's all been almost a mist. It's not really in our region. Uh, it's been misty to light rain down in um, Noises County. They've had rain from there all the way down, but it's not very heavy just yet. Thing is, that moisture is definitely moving in our direction, and we should be seeing some of this stuff uh, actually hitting the ground very soon. So how much rain will we get? Well, between tonight and tomorrow, it should be a substantial amount because not only is that uh, moisture that you saw coming up up in the higher levels of the atmosphere, we've got south winds kicking in the moisture from the lower atmosphere, and that's why we think we're going to be looking at rainfall. Now here's Future Tracker. We're going forward. We start, uh, of course, tonight. We go forward and we can see, you know, what, uh, okay, come on, we can do it. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, while you watch that, let me go push the button over here uh, because for some reason this ain't working. But you can see the rain coming up from the south and then it uh, should be in the neighborhood by um, midnight tonight. Uh, it's certainly down southern areas. Overnight uh, into Friday, we're going to be looking at shower activity all day long. Could get up to one inch of rain in some spots, so do be cautious. Here's the good news, though. By Saturday morning, the cold front will start rolling through and then push all this away from our area. So it's not going to be hanging around for beyond Friday. There may be some little light drizzle early on Saturday, but then it will clear up. The problem is it's going to be rather chilly. High temperatures on uh, the weekend are going to be in the 50s. Overnight lows getting down into the 30s. Here's Future Tracker, and this one tells you how much rain we're going to get. And you can see Victoria County looking at half inch to an inch. So that's uh, the, the, the expectation. And if you go further south, you can see how the valley is going to be looking at much heavier rainfall because that's where all that tropical moisture is. Once again, we've got tropical moisture coming up from the south from the Pacific. Then we got this frontal system coming down. They're going to collide together and give us that rain chance. And then high pressure takes over as we get on into the weekend. And it looks good for maybe two or three cool, crisp days. And then you're not going to believe this. This uh, low is going to develop. It's going to pump up a big, strong south wind. And we're going to warm up middle of next week, almost 80 degrees. How about that? So rain coming in tonight. It'll be damp all day long tomorrow. I don't think you're going to get much done outdoors. 65 should be the high in uh, Port Lavaca. In the Cuero area, rain all day long, and then uh, hopefully ending by maybe even sundown, uh, just the heavy stuff. And then uh, overnight we'll have some clouds, but eventually the north wind will kick in. High temperature on Friday, 65. On Saturday, 50. Sunday, we're <laughs> going to be at 57. Overnight lows getting down uh, into the mid 30s, so cold. But then a quick warming trend as we get into middle of next week, almost 80 degrees later on. That is your seven day forecast reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that. Put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Karina. Thank you, Mac. And now here's sports reporter Zach Brown. Thank you, Zach.
to the area round for girls basketball. We go and for the Victoria East Lady Titans. It's also get back season. They will play Veterans Memorial Brownsville at Alice High School tomorrow. And the reason why it is get back season is because last year they lost to the same team in the same round in the same gym. It was a tough five point loss, but the Lady Titans returned most of their players and they feel a lot better this time around. And we know um, exactly what we needed to do from last year that can um, help us get better. We know we had to get better defensively. And um, one thing we need to work on is man, which we've been, we've been working on all season to get to this point right here. And we're a better team this year than we were last year, and we know exactly what we need to do. We're not the same team that we were last year, and I feel like also these kids now, they're a year older, they have a little bit more experience. Uh, and so I think that they're motivated and confident that uh, we're going to do all we can to try to, to try to win the game. Big talking point was how much better defensively they were. Tip off for that game will be tomorrow at Alice at 6 p.m. Down the road from Victoria East lies another playoff team. This is the St. Joseph Lady Flyers, who have had an incredible turnaround from their last few seasons. They got in via a tiebreaker they held over a district opponent because they beat them both times in the regular season. They also had a tough schedule to close out the year playing many ranked teams, and it's a similar story in their by district round. They get the number three team in the state, but the girls ready for the task. It's really special that we worked hard enough to get here. Coach MJ has pushed us so hard. He has done so many drills. He has given us so much advice, not even just on the court, but he sends us encouraging messages and he's just always, he's always there for us. And it's made us want it more. MJ's really been a great help in growing the program. We had some tough games and they're, they were good experiences to help us know how hard we can play and how hard we have to push in order to get a win. They always speak highly of head coach MJ Johnson, who is proud of how far they have come. They travel to Houston on Tuesday. We're about two months removed from high school football season, but more honors being thrown out. This from the Texas Sports Writers All-State team. And in Class 2A, the Referia Bobcats had three players make the list. Four-star receiver Ernest Campbell, linebacker Caleb Brown, and defensive lineman James Jimenez finish off the first team honors for Crossroads teams in Class 2A. In 3A, Edna's Braylon Harris was a first team receiver. He was a great option all year for Jaden Clay to go to. And the state runner-up, Tidehaven Tigers, had three in the first team. Baylor four-star commit Joseph Dodds, Justin Griffith, and Matt Rush highlighted that great defense over in El Maiden. And in Class 4A, the Calhoun Sand Crabs had two players make the list. Fullback Jace Campos and as the utility player, Derek Salinas, who will be returning and is only a junior. And from Quero, star linebacker Brant Patek makes it in as well. And more Quero news, the boys basketball team, well, they're traveling to Lavernia to take on Fox Tech. The winner of this game goes to the postseason. Quero won big against them last time out. Don and Karina, back to you. Thanks, Zach. We're going to be back in a moment. The warm winter in Japan is causing a big change for cherry blossom trees. A serious challenge prowls many streets across Victoria County. Roaming and stray animals pose a risk to the community and finding their owners often impossible. The animals that don't have a voice, that's what we're there for. To help, you know. So what's being done to ensure the safety of our streets and these lost or abandoned pets? Join me, reporter Lupi Sapata, for Safe Streets, Safe Pets, a 25 News Now Extra, Thursday night at 10. <laughs>
Finally tonight, cherry blossom trees are already in full bloom in southwestern Japan due to the Ooh. warm winter. Early. Local tourism officials said that, by the way, that was Mac you heard, yeah. and said that the flowers started to peak around a month earlier than usual this season. Temperatures in the area is expected to hover around 59 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit this week. The mercury usually doesn't reach that high until mid-April. Well, oh, now, it, for, now for us, it, it usually yeah. does. But in that part of Japan, mm -hmm. where, which has hosted several Winter Olympics, mm -hmm. this is strange. Yeah. yeah. What did I say as soon as I saw you said that? That's way too early. It's yes, not time. absolutely. Yeah. Because it is, and I'm afraid, not, not afraid, but this is going to happen here. Next week, when we start pushing up to 80 degrees, a lot of blossoms are going to start coming out and Maybe. a little bit earlier than normal. Well, folks, for uh, tonight, we're looking at the rain rolling in from the south. It'll be getting heavier after midnight, and it looks like a pretty soggy Friday pretty much all day. But by t later, and by Saturday morning, it starts pulling away, and that'll be giving us a clear and colder weekend. Thank you, Mac. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tonight for 25 News Now at 10.